This is the Drive Command DAC, and it's designed to generate precision control signals for servo-controlled hydraulic machines like rock testing apparatus. Today, we're gonna to take a deep dive and look at its features. A DAC, or digital to analog converter, is something that takes a digital signal and produces a continuous analog voltage output. This is a 16-bit DAC, meaning that it can produce up to 65,535 unique analog voltages on the output. And that's great for generating things like ramp or saw functions, where we want to prescribe or create a command signal for load or displacement in testing apparatus. We're going to go ahead and look at some of the features that make this uniquely suited to materials testing laboratories. When you get your drive command DAC, in the box will be the unit itself, a USB cable to connect it to a computer, a test lead with a BNC and banana jack, and a power supply. So let's go ahead and set up this unit and do some testing. The power supply that comes with the unit has a variety of plug adapters for international plugs. So this will work on 110 or 220. And then inside, we have the actual wall transformer. These plugs are very easy to change out. They just snap on if you need to change for your local plug. And the barrel jack is going to plug in to a DC power port on the back of the unit. The front panel of the Drive Command DAC is designed for ease of use in the laboratory with access to the most commonly used features made very easy. On the left side of the panel, we have a four row by 20 character LCD display with backlight that makes it easy to see. This shows critical information such as the rate that the signal is being output at, the calibration being used, upper and lower limits, and waveform style. Next, we have an encoder with button that you can use to change settings. There's a zero button to take the unit back to the minimum output for the range set. And these switches are tactile switches so that you can use them while you're watching your experiment, monitoring the equipment. You don't need to be looking up at a touch screen to see if it's registered your touch. They provide a nice click. We also have LEDs that are clearly labeled. So right now you can see that we're running and our output is changing. I'm gonna stop. So you always know the state and you can change that state easily. You can change the direction up or down again with a LED indicator. So I'm going to run now and go in the opposite direction. And then the order of output switch to change the rate of output by a factor of 10 up or by a factor of 10 down. So this lets me change to a much slower rate. Very easy. Finally, over here we have the upper and lower limit lights that indicate when the unit has reached one of the preset limits. So if we allow the unit to go all the way down to the current limit of minus 10, the lower limit light illuminates. We have a BNC output on the front that can be connected to the equipment that you're going to control, or it can be connected to a monitoring device such as a meter, though right next to it we have built in a panel meter that has a graphical scale that shows you where you are in the range of the unit as well as the current value being output by the drive command DAC. On the back of the DAC, we have our power input barrel jack, which is just a 12 volt center positive standard DC input jack. We have our fuse to protect the unit, and that's easily changed. A USB B port to connect to the computer for serial command. And a duplicate separately buffered output port from that output port on the front. We recommend using the back output port to connect to the equipment that you're going to control and using the front output as a monitoring, troubleshooting, or extra recording output. One of the key features of the Drive Command DAC is the fact that you can set your rate of change of the output in your engineering units. This has two calibration factors built in that you can set in engineering units per volt. So for example, if I have a displacement transducer and a load cell connected to my system and I can control that system in either a displacement or a load feedback mode, I could set calibration A to be my displacement, calibration B to be my load, and switch between them using the menu or the serial interface. This means that I can actually set that I want a displacement rate of 10 microns per second or a loading ramp rate of one kilonewton per second. And in that case, this will generate the required command signal to make that happen based on the calibration that you've entered. 
This makes it much easier when you're running experiments in the laboratory to not have to think about things in terms of voltage or do conversions on the fly. You're just setting real engineering units. Another feature is that we have built in two of the most common waveforms that are used in materials testing, the linear ramp and the sawtooth. You can set a rate and just go between two limits, a lower and an upper limit, and the unit will stop when it reaches a limit or when you command it to. Or you can set a saw waveform where once the upper limit is reached, it will reverse direction at the same rate to the lower limit and then reverse direction back again to the upper limit until you turn the unit to the stop mode. Since we did design the drive command act for the rock mechanics testing industry, we have a few features that are unique to that industry as well, like the order of magnitude switch. Often we want to change the velocity that we're moving a sample at by an order of magnitude for a velocity stepping test to determine the frictional properties of that material. Instead of having to use the encoder and enter something that is a factor of 10 higher or lower, or use the software interface, we've just integrated a switch right onto the front panel, making those on-the-fly testing decisions easy to execute. Most laboratories use either minus 5 to 5 or minus 10 to 10 volts for their command and control signals, and the drive command DAC can generate either. But uniquely, we're actually switching gains internally so you get the full 16 bits across both of those ranges. It's not just a software limit, meaning that you get smaller voltage steps so you can have those nice gradual voltage control ramps that you'd like. We've built a number of other custom features in that make your life in the laboratory easier. We've got many settings that can be changed via the front panel. They can also be changed via the serial command interface, so you can use Python, MATLAB, LabVIEW, whatever you'd like to send command signals to this. And all of that's detailed over in the manual, so be sure to go take a look and see what all you can do with this device. The Drive Command DAC is a great choice when you need to generate a precision analog output, especially if you need things like those slow ramping or saw waveforms. With its precise 16-bit digital to analog converter, robust design, easy rack mountability, and versatile applications with things like dual calibrations and built-in self-calibration, this is a great choice to add to your lab today. Be sure to check the links down in the description to buy yours today, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.